One franchise, six movies, lots of dinosaurs. I don't know. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are doing a Jurassic Park tier list. That's right, we are ranking all of the Jurassic Park movies in order from my least favorite to my favorite, but putting them on specific tiers. I need you guys in the comments down below. Has this franchise lived up to the hype, or is it still just the first movie and the rest of them. If you guys like this tier list and you want to see more, be sure to drop that thumbs up. We may just do a Pixar tier list next week in honor of Lightyear, but right now I want to talk some dinosaurs. Let's start with the first film. I figured we'd get it out of the way. It's the obvious one. It's the obvious choice. It's the OG directed by Steven Spielberg. And this is one of those movies that so many people grew up with. It formed their childhood. My friend Sam, who went with me to the screening of Dominion, he is in love with this film. But all of this is the case, not just because nostalgia is clouding the visions of those who... No, it's genuinely a phenomenal film. And I watched an interview the other day with the cast talking about how this didn't feel like they were making a blockbuster. It felt like they were filming an independent movie that was about to revolutionize special effects because we know what it was able to do for CGI. A lot of people talk about the practical effects in this film, and they're magnificent, but the CGI, it pushed Hollywood movies forward by leaps and bounds, and Spielberg, he's not single-handedly responsible for what came after, but he's a big part of it, a big piece of it. And a film as simple as putting an interesting group of characters on an island filled with dinosaurs and seeing what happens, that movie came together so seamlessly from top to bottom. First off, you have to have compelling characters. And who better to get than someone like a Jeff Goldblum, a Sam Neill, a Laura Dern, and then Richard Attenborough as Hammond, who just brings it all together, delivers those iconic lines, welcome to Jurassic Park, and sets you off on an adventure that, yes, it has action, all right? all throughout the movie, but the focus is always on the thrills, the chills, the suspense, and the horror, and that's what makes this first film great. The story is simple, but it's compelling. The younger characters, they are good, but it's the situations that they get in on this island, and that allow the movie to flourish. So at the end of the day, the most obvious choice of the video, Jurassic Park, on the S tier. It's an iconic movie for a reason. Next up, and I've had an interesting relationship with this movie. It's The Lost World, Jurassic Park, also directed by Steven Spielberg, but this time starring pretty much a new cast of characters. You have those returning characters, and obviously this film is headlined by Jeff Goldblum. Hammond, yes, he's back, and then a couple of these supporting players, but it's up to Ian Malcolm to kind of lead us through this somewhat similar Somewhat interesting at the beginning, but I did struggle with the pacing journey. But as we progress through this movie and we get back into those situations that I was just talking about, as in, well, bunch of people on an island, there's dinosaurs, what could happen? And the standout scenes in this film, in my opinion, they may not surpass the original, but they match up to the original. I don't like the plot as much. And the cast of characters obviously isn't as compelling. We're missing Sam Neill. We're missing Laura Dern. And don't get me wrong. I like Julianne Moore. I like Vince Vaughn. And this supporting cast is good overall. I also thought the character of Roland stole the entire show every time he was on screen. Such a fascinating character. But there are more characters than that. This other group didn't interest me as much. And setting this research team out on this site B of Jurassic Park, even though Ian Malcolm's like, what are you doing? So he essentially goes in to save the day. It's not the brightest of ideas. And then we move through all these situations and the scene in the bus, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, the glass slowly cracking underneath them, right? There are moments in this film that really got to me this time around. Moments that didn't hit me as hard last time I watched it because I've always been really down on this movie. But I guess after watching the new franchise, a sequel that goes back to the roots of the original Jurassic Park is refreshing. And guess what? We even get a little taste of Dominion at the end of this movie because our T-Rex 
goes out into everyday civilization and that one to two scenes of that T-Rex running through this small town, people freaking out, cars going by, eating the dog out of the doghouse, even though that made me sad, that sequence is exactly what I wanted from Jurassic World Dominion and didn't get. So that one sequence, in my opinion, is more entertaining than the premise of the newest movie. And that in itself makes it a better film. My biggest issue and what keeps it from reaching those heights is the fact that it didn't have as many dinosaur heavy moments in the film. There's a lot of dialogue, a lot of talking and, you know, ideas of should we be sending people to this island and, and conversations and that's not what I want in a Jurassic Park movie. So I've always had an issue with getting through that dialogue. But like I said, when we get those moments, it's solid and at least the script is not completely cheesy and ridiculous like other scripts. I've actually turned around on this film as of late, and I think it's a solid follow-up. Not as good, tiny bit underwhelming, but solid at the end of the day. Jurassic Park 3, the return of Sam Neill to this franchise after sitting out in one movie, and new characters once again uh, coming in like a William H. Macy, and actors, performers that you think would fit in together into this Jurassic Park world. But unlike the second film, where they all come in and kind of find their place, even though they're not as standout as the first movie, this time, these characters and really good actors playing these characters don't quite mesh. There was something off about the chemistry in this film. There's also a lot going on within the action-heavy moments. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a scene or two in this third film that outshine numerous moments in the newer movies and the Spinosaurus is something that if you're growing up with Jurassic Park 3 and you see that Spinosaurus you're probably going to enjoy the film because whenever we get those big grand epic moments on screen they're fun they're entertaining unfortunately the action scenes are a bit clunky the mix of CGI and practical effects in this third film they don't quite work and like I said the chemistry between the actors there's something about it that feels off, and there's something about the moments that start to lean too heavily into the ridiculousness that feel distinctly different from the other two movies in the franchise. And I'm not saying Jurassic Park 3 just completely destroyed the legacy of the first, but you have the return of Sam Neill. This should have been a better script. Even a director like Joe Johnston, who I thought would fit in well to this universe, there's something off about the way it, it, it fell in, and it almost felt like they were doing this movie, and it probably is the case for every Hollywood blockbuster sequel, to make a quick buck. Now, again, that's the case for all the big movies, but you don't want it to feel like that. And Jurassic Park 3, watching it again, you know, in comparison to the second one, which I grew more and more on as I went, I'm like, okay, maybe I was giving this movie too hard of a time. Jurassic Park 3... Some nice moments when that intensity builds and you feel the fear of our characters. That's solid. But then you have the talking dinosaur, Alan, and everything in that vein that it leans so heavily in in this film. I'm like, ah, again, I don't hate this film. That's why it's going on the D tier. But in comparison to the first two, it is a big disappointment. Although my friend who's a massive Jurassic Park fan would disagree. He actually really enjoys this movie. Jurassic World. Listen, I was so nervous for this first movie because just like Star Wars bringing it back, first movie in a long time, that was the case for this film, except it was the first movie in a really, really long time. It's like, what are they going to do to open everything up and give us something familiar yet fun? And even though this first film does start to go more into the action direction than the other three films, and instead of focusing on that horror and building up the suspense and the moments that need suspense, and don't get me wrong, there are shades of that in this film, absolutely, it's more focused on running from the dinosaurs and running at the dinosaurs and Chris Pratt's ability to embrace being an action star, whereas in my opinion... Jurassic Park doesn't really need an action star. Jurassic Park just needs to focus in on, on the terrifying nature of what a dinosaur is and can be. But with this genetically modified hybrid dinosaur in the Indominus Rex and 
posing a challenge to even the T-Rex, right? These are all things that when they're able to showcase that on screen, like the scene where they go in to take out the Indominus Rex and it's camouflage and finds its way to take everyone out around it and, you know, hunting down our two young kid characters and a lot of people are, are giving the movie flack for this, but I actually thought they were fine, right? You know, they're young, they're brooding, they're kind of like, ugh. So the writing wasn't great in that vein, but Ty Simpkins and Nick Robinson, they're actually solid in the roles and... Even though I wasn't in love with their characters like I should have been, the moments where they are in peril, that's what I want to see from Jurassic Park. And when they all kind of reunite at the end and the scene where the dinosaurs are all attacking the island and the park goers, man, that was so freaking cool. Little overly dramatic, you know, the scene when the babysitter flies into the little little much, Colin Trevorrow. You got to chill out on that. But anyway, it was, it was funny. It was a good meme. I just feel like this is what you want in a blockbuster movie. Not the best script in the world, but it's fun, entertaining, and it kept it simple and didn't start going into a clone storyline. I'm putting Jurassic World on the B tier. I saw someone on Twitter say the destruction of the park at the end of the first act of this movie symbolizes the destruction of the franchise. And I said, well, you're not wrong. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom has a genuinely solid opening act. And you know what? I'll give J.A. Bayona credit. His direction isn't bad in this movie. And no, a lot of people's going to give me flack for this. I actually feel as if his direction is better than Colin Trevorrow's. Now, Colin Trevorrow did the first Jurassic World and the third, and there are some scenes and some moments. I think the intensity is solid overall, but Bayona's love and passion for bringing the horror and the suspense out of those dinosaur moments works better in this franchise than Colin Trevorrow's. That being said, the script for Fallen Kingdom is really bad. And from that halfway point on, because when the island is destroyed and we get that beautiful moment of the dinosaurs, you know, in pain and in peril, and it's devastating and those stakes, man, they are so high, it all just kind of, it, I, what, what happened? What happened in the third act of this movie? It, it's genuinely just ridiculous. And the clone storyline for me is one that I guess when you put it all together in the auction and what happens with this young girl, it somewhat makes sense, but the execution was so flat and I just didn't care about anything happening. Also, our two characters here in Owen and Claire, they felt like they were both distinctly different with their philosophies in the first film. Whereas in this movie, they almost do the reverse. They almost switch mentalities. And I'm like, where did this come from? It is somewhat of that Star Wars modern trilogy thing of the first movie's here, and then it goes in a completely different direction here, and then they try to bring it back. I feel the same way about this film. Even getting a different director for the second movie and going back to the first director. The parallels are ridiculously similar. I'm not saying I feel the same way about The Last Jedi uh, about this movie, but it is kind of scary how similar it feels. And Fallen Kingdom for me was just so flat with his third act. And the way that it ends had me so interested and compelled. But the entire buildup for that was just like, uh, okay. And look, I don't hate the idea of this extinction level threat taking out this island and the inhabitants of it, but they played it wrong. And then we get all of these cartoon villains, right? There are cartoon villains in the third film, but in this movie, every antagonist was ridiculous ridiculously over the top, just not very entertaining. And every time they're on screen, I'm like, I, why, why is, how did we get from the first movie to this? It just doesn't make sense. This anger and frustration is coming more so from disappointment rather than hating the entirety of this movie. Because again, that scene where the island is being destroyed is beautiful, but the rest of the film struggles heavily, in my opinion. I'm putting Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom on the E tier. It's not F, but it's not good. And finally, Jurassic World Dominion. You're bringing back the old cast. The cast that we know and love from the first three films and reuniting them. Giving them, you know, a new dynamic and relationships carrying forward after not seeing each other for all of these years. And 
how in the world did the Jurassic World, did this not all come together and work out perfectly? Then you combine them with the new cast, Claire and Owen and the clone storyline, which I didn't care about. But I actually think this young actress gets a lot to do in this movie that is better than what she had to do in the last film. And she probably has more character growth than Owen and Claire because they're just they're stagnant characters. And that wouldn't be a huge deal if that wasn't the focus, right? You'd think a Jurassic Park or a Jurassic World movie would focus on the dinosaurs, especially when they're running rampant across the Earth. It's like Planet of the Apes with dinosaurs. How do you mess this up? How do you not capture the horror that could come from this situation? Well, they... Um, they don't, and they don't ever focus on that. They keep the story centered around our human characters. So if that's the case, you have to have good writing for those human characters. I heard an argument saying, well, Austin, it's a movie about dinosaurs. Why? Do yeah, it should be, but the last movie and this movie, it never focuses on the dinosaurs. It tries, okay? I'll give it that, right? The blue storyline, which was a little ridiculous with how important it was for the story. But hey, you're giving us a dinosaur storyline. That's kind of cool. You also have the big thing at the end, and I'm not going to spoil anything, with the T-Rex. You know, that big battle that we get and the, the shoehorning of Easter eggs, which it just feels so off base from the other two movies because, you know, at least the first Jurassic World, while giving us callbacks and Easter eggs, did not shoehorn them into almost every other scene. Dominion does that. Again, I'm going back to that Star Wars comparison. This is kind of the rise of Skywalker for the Jurassic Park franchise because you're bringing back everyone, right? You're giving us the culmination of this entire thing and a handful of scenes, mostly in that third act, that just fully deliver on what you want. When they're all on that island and they're either being chased by the dinosaurs or all going after something together. And trust me, they're together. The movie lets us know there's like 20 shots of them all standing and backing up. slowly. <laughs> How many times are you going to do that? But the scenes with our characters hiding and run, there are quite a few in the third act and those were genuinely entertaining. And again, the overarching idea of dinosaurs run, that's cool. But that's why I was so disappointed with the final product, because the first two acts are just kind of run of the mill by the numbers, really cartoonish villains and storylines that never come back into play. And in the ending with this sense of finality, yes, but was it a good one? In my opinion, no. And that's why I'm putting Jurassic World Dominion on the D tier. It's not too far from Fallen Kingdom. At least it combined both the casts, but at what cost? All right, it's time to put these in order, and let's see if we actually have the proper order here. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom at the bottom, yes, but which one is better, Dominion or Jurassic Park 3? Yeah, I'm keeping Jurassic Park 3 there. At least it had the same feel of the first two movies, which I can appreciate. On the B tier, we have Jurassic World and The Lost World. And you know, if you would have asked me this like a week ago, I, I probably would have said Jurassic World, but after re-watching The Lost World, I'm going to keep it in second place, right? That original trilogy feel, for the most part, is what you want with this franchise. But it all spawns from the first movie. The order that we had was the order that we're sticking with. Jurassic Park, it will never be defeated. Even if they bring us more movies and continue the franchise in 25 years, whatever they do, I don't think they're ever matching the heights of that first Jurassic Park. Still holds up. 1993 looks good to this day and if i had to rank camp cretaceous i'd probably put it on that b tier. I, I really enjoy camp cretaceous i don't know why they didn't tie it in to jurassic world dominion it is kind of ridiculous regardless how do you all feel about the jurassic park movies are you higher on them than me or are you just disappointed with the totality of the franchise like myself you guys the best come back more tier lists more reviews and stuff. That's exciting.